Hey, what's up guys? TBL here, and oh yeah, here we are. Back in the midst of the fight, back in the middle of New York City, taking down crime and taking back this world one block at a time. That's right, the Division Beta is back live, and I cannot be happier. I'm rocking this out on the Xbox One right now, and I have just been playing a ton of Division Beta, and uh, that's what we're going to be talking a little bit about today, just the Division Beta what I've been doing, what there is to do, because there are a couple of new things to do here this time around. <laughs> and again, I gotta tell you guys, it feels good to be back. It's kind of like I'm getting my fix before uh, the full game comes out on March 8th. You guys know I played around a lot on the Division beta uh, about two, maybe three weeks ago when we had the closed beta, and I really just absolutely fell in love with the gameplay. I love the cover shooting. I love the uh, modification system. Ooh, get dunked on, kid. And this game really just went from something that wasn't on my radar at all to basically a must-buy when it comes out. Now this is an open beta, so any of you guys out there who want to get in on this and experience what the division is like, uh, you can jump in. All you have to do if you're on Xbox is go to the uh, Xbox One store, look for the division, and download it. The beta is available today. You can play it right now. If you're on PlayStation, the preloading for the beta started a couple of days ago on the uh, on the 16th, and you can do the same thing. Just head to the PSN store. Everybody can play it. It's completely free. You don't have to pre-order or anything. Uh, just head to the uh, PSN store, download it, and it'll be available for you starting tomorrow on the 19th. And I gotta say, I'm loving it, and I think you guys will too. But alright, we covered a lot of the basics the last time the beta was around, so I'm not going to waste too much time going into that. I'm just going to talk to you guys a little bit about what's new. Um, basically, in PvE, you have a couple of new encounters and side missions, and one new story mission, which is what you're seeing right here. After you complete the hospital mission, you'll, uh, you'll find this mission right here, the Subway Morgue, where we have to find a man named Paul Rhodes to set up the security wing of your home base. Doing that will get you access to a couple of the security security based upgrades most importantly the turret and that thing is awesome you can set it up anywhere and it just goes to town on enemies I've spent a lot of time playing around with that and I think it's gonna come in handy when I make my way into the dark zone which I'm not gonna be doing until I hit at least level 8 or 9 now unfortunately about as we expected uh, if you played the closed beta your character does not carry over you do have to start over, so all your stats, all the weapons and stuff that you collected previously, you're going to have to get again. But uh, there are some new things this time around. It has been confirmed that the safe house in the Dark Zone contains different weapons, so it's not going to be the old Caduceus and uh, high-end shotgun. We've got some new stuff, and there's a lot of new things to do in the beta. The PvE still seems a little bit limited, because, uh, like I said, there's only one new big story mission and uh, a couple new side missions. So that is a little disappointing. I was hoping for some more uh, PvE content, but there's still plenty of stuff to do in the Dark Zone. And that is, of course, where you're probably going to be spending the majority of your time in the beta. Once you get to appropriate level like 6 or 7, and you can head into the Dark Zone itself, you'll probably be spending most of your time in there hunting down rogue agents, taking on the uh, PvE enemies in there, and uh, some of the increased little dungeon type areas. There's a couple more instances you can go into with a couple more uh, world bosses that have been con confirmed to spawn. I think in the previous beta there was only like one or two in the Dark Zone. I remember the, the cleaners guy, which are the guys I'm fighting right now, who uh, set everything on fire as you're seeing right there and then just a regular street gang inside of that sports shop and I think there's a couple more in this open beta so there's more things to do and more things to do in a beta is exactly what you want to hear now the gameplay that's available is still pretty basic uh, there really haven't been too much changes between the uh, between the closed beta and the open one it's still a looter shooter, you know. It's basically an RPG with shooting elements attached to it. And uh, a loot system that I actually rather like. You know, you can change every aspect of your character. And armor is separated completely from visuals. So the aesthetics, the way your character looks is separated from armor. So you can put on whatever armor you want and then look however you want. And I really, really, really appreciate that. The shooting, for the most part, feels to me the same as it did in the closed beta. It's not great, but it's not bad. It's a fairly fluid system that you can jump into and jump out of pretty easily. If you're looking for uh, shooting mechanics and gameplay that's as tight and well-balanced as something like uh, Call of Duty or Destiny, you're not going to find it here. This game is uh, its primarily an RPG, and it's a shooter, a third-person shooter second. 
Also, you have to play carefully in this game. Even in PvE, it's really easy to get uh, overwhelmed by enemies and just taken out with the quickness. They have a very good habit of just burning you down if you even show a little bit of uh, a little bit of skin around cover. Thankfully, to help with that, the cover system in the game is absolutely fantastic. If you've played some of the previous third-person shooters from Ubisoft like Ghost Recon or Splinter Cell, you'll feel right at home. It's very good. You are going to have to worry a bit about recoil because some of these guns kick like a horse. It's ridiculous and you really have to get some of the, uh, the weapon mods like uh, foregrips and whatnot to, to help with the stability a bit which is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a bad thing because you need to do a lot to make these guns stable, or you just have to manage your fire like you're playing Battlefield, burst fire and all that. Or you have to get, uh, or you have to get, you know, mods and whatnot to make the weapon a little bit easier to handle and a little bit more effective against enemies. And that's really cool. It's one of my favorite things about this game. You can modify almost any weapon. And the system for it is really easy and intuitive, and uh, it works pretty well. It's going to be something I show off in uh, some of the live streams we're going to be having later this week, where we uh, where we play through the division, just to give you guys a better indication of what it's like on the fly. And now, speaking of those live streams in particular, uh, Jay and I both got this for Xbox One, and uh, we got it for PlayStation 4, so we will be holding live streams on this on the Xbox One probably later today, and then again on the PlayStation 4 over the weekend. So if you guys may are wind up picking it up, feel free to join in. I also finally managed to drag John into this, and he, uh, he finally downloaded the Division beta, and hopefully he'll be joining in too. That is, if we can pry him away from Final Fantasy XIV. That man has been going in on that game. And hold up, did you see my gun there? The barrel of your gun actually overheats as you're firing, and you can see steam and stuff coming off of it. Oh man, I just love, I love the amount of detail that was put into this game. It's so well crafted, and it's so very fun to play, and uh, I really can't wait to see what the full game is going to be like. But boom, there we go, completed the final objective, the boss of, uh, of this mission here, again, the second story mission, the last PvE story mission that's in the beta, got that completed, and again, that unlocks part of the security wing. So let's head on back to the home base and show you guys what that's like. So here we are back at the HQ, and this is, uh, this is the base that you're going to be building up as you progress through the PvE story mode of the game. Uh, you guys who played the previous beta will know about the medical section. Once you finish that mission, you head over here, and it unlocks a couple of uh, medical perks and whatnot for you to upgrade into. But in this beta, we actually get the, uh, the tech wing. After you've rescued Paul Rhodes from the underground subway morgue, appropriate name, I know, but you get this little cutscene, and upon its completion, you will be able to upgrade your tech wing and gain access to the turret. So we're going to take a little bit of time to show you guys that. Once you've rescued Rhodes, head over to the laptop, and then basically the game will have you upgrade the control room, which as you can see over there on the right, unlocks the uh, turret perk. Let me get that done. There we go. We are 10% operational, and it gained me a, a new backpack perk, as well as the turret. And it's just as simple as that. Presumably in the full game, that's how you'll continue to uh, unlock perks on your skill tree and continue to progress your character as you continue to complete PvE missions. But there we go. That's pretty much it for the PvE section of the uh, Division Beta. I still have a couple of side quests and little uh, missions to do around the map, but once you finish the Medical Wing Hospital and the Subway Morgue, that's pretty much it for the PvE. The only thing left is the dark zone and again that is where you're probably going to find the majority of uh of things to do at least in the division beta hopefully the uh the full game has a bit more to do outside of the dark zone in pve areas but the dark zone itself is definitely very fun and i'm going to be heading in there very soon once i level up a couple more times maybe get a few bits of better gear then i'll head inside and start hunting down those rogues but alright, as for now, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. I have got a lot of other stuff to do. I've already recorded a good maybe two to three hours of gameplay that I had to get over to editing. And I will be bringing you guys some live streams probably later today once I get in from work. I am definitely going to be jumping onto this and playing it for, uh, for quite some time in the future. And I would say for any of you guys out there who are curious about The Division, maybe you don't know if it's, uh, if it's something you want to feel like buying, I would definitely say... Pick up the beta, it's absolutely free, it's open to everybody on Xbox One and PS4 right now, and make a decision for yourself. 
But all right, it's going to be it for this one, guys. I got to get out there and start hunting some rogues. So as always, I am the Black Link. You guardians stay frosty, and I'll catch you in the dark zone.